Good morning and welcome back to another Author Time vlog in which I vlog what I'm doing as a quote-unquote full-time author. I'm actually a temp in my day job and I'm in between positions right now so I am concentrating exclusively on my author business. If you don't know who I am, I am Sheena Peril. I am the author of about 10 books. It's a little bit more than that now. Um, I also design knitting patterns, and I have several fluffy assistants that you'll be seeing throughout this vlog. I've got one here and one here right now, and I'm waiting to see which one decides to walk in front of the camera first. So today is Saturday, which is my Monday. Um, when I'm on what I call author time, I adjust my schedule to match my partner who gets Thursdays and Fridays off. So that makes Saturday the new Monday. Uh, so today is a much overdue podcast day. Um, so I'm going to be working on research for my true crime audio podcast, The Ghosts of Highway 16, which is all about the missing and murdered women along Highway 16 in British Columbia, Canada. Um, I'm starting up season two in May, so I want to get all of the research and scripts done before that starts, so that way I just have to worry about the recording and editing. So we're working on research this morning um, and probably this afternoon as well. Before we do that though, I do need to do um, some stuff with unemployment and apply for some jobs as well as you know doing the admin work side of things. And in between, I'm going to be doing um, some chores. You might hear some background noise. That is the laundry going right now. So today I'm doing what I call laundry sprints, which is I work in roughly half an hour to hour increments based on the cycle of our washer and dryer. <laughs> and then I'll take a break once I transfer over the laundry or... Um, I'll go do a couple of household chores. You might be able to tell my room is a little bit of a mess right now. Um, so we're also going to be working on that in between. But since I'm doing some boring stuff first this morning, I'm going to go ahead and pop in a movie and go ahead and watch that while I do the not so fun computer stuff. Bad news. I did not follow through on the laundry sprints. Good news is I got an episode of the podcast researched and scripted. The bad part of that is that it took me two and a half movies to do that, and I kind of forgot about the laundry. So now I have this mass of laundry that I need to take care of. But first, cheese. Okay, good morning. It is Sunday. Um, I've had a slight change of plans. So this is still going to be a textile day, but originally I was going to work on sewing and like sketching out potential patterns that I could make um, or that I can design. However, so three days ago on Thursday, there was a major tornado in an area where I spent a lot of time growing up. It's where my grandparents live. My mom currently lives in the area. And this town was just absolutely devastated. Like there is almost nothing left. So I've been racking my brain trying to think of something that I can do to help from 3,000 miles away. And I would love to do some kind of fundraiser. So what I'm going to be doing is I need to film an intro that is going to go in front of all of my videos for the next couple of weeks. And I'm also going to design a hat pattern. And I'm trying to film the design process of the hat pattern for the channel. And because this is really time sensitive, I'm trying to make that Wednesday's video. So that is what I'm going to be working on for most of today. 
Um, I'm going to be working on knitting that, putting together the, the video elements for it. And then um, if I have a little time, I still need to do laundry and I need to block a sweater. So that is the plan for today. So since I'm doing a little bit more of a formal video, we're going to do a little bit of a get ready for me catch up or sorry, get ready with me slash catch up uh, segment here. Um, so my usual caveat, I am not a makeup guru. I am flying by the seat of my pants and I can't find my handheld mirror right now. So I am pretty much wholly reliant on the uh, screen of my phone right now, which is what I'm filming on, which is not the way I would like to do this. And in fact, I would like to be using the rear facing camera, but when I do that, I can't tell what's in frame and what isn't, unless I have a mirror behind it. And that is frequently very hard to set up. So anyway, that's what we're doing right now. Um, and I'm going to go into more detail about the tornado and everything in the video that I'm putting together. Um, but the short version is that this is a town of about 2,000 people. It's very small. And the trailer park was wiped out. The campground was wiped out. Um, the only laundromat was wiped out. I think there's maybe two or three gas stations and at least one of them suffered major damage. I don't know if it's still functional or safe to use. Um, Main Street was badly damaged. I'm not sure how many businesses are still able to operate there. Right now, nothing is able to operate because they don't have any power or any water at the moment. But once they get that back, I don't know what condition they're going to be in to open for business. And then I've, um, from what I have heard, there were three people killed and 26 people were sent to the local hospital with injuries, mostly things like bruises, concussions, broken bones, that kind of thing. Thankfully, that is the only list of casualties because this is an entirely tourist-based economy. And if this had happened later in the spring or closer to like Memorial Day when their season really starts, this would have been absolutely horrendous. So this area, a lot of the homes are just little cottages. They're, I don't know, like maybe 200 square feet. They're really small and they're sitting on concrete blocks. They don't have very stable foundations. Very few of the homes in the area actually have basements. Um, I'm really lucky in that where my family is, they do have access to a basement. And so these houses just literally blew away in the tornado. It was an F3 tornado, which is pretty bad. But part of the reason that there's so much damage is just because of the type of construction that's in this area. So this place started out as a resort in like the 1930s. Um, the lake it's on is primarily man-made. It was like a couple of smaller lake slash pond things that they then connected and made into a much larger lake and it's now a state park. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the construction for the lake was part of the New Deal during the Depression. So this is an area that has always had a lot of problems with poverty and making the lake was one of the things that helped lift it out of poverty in the 30s. So there's a lot of these small, very old vacation homes in the area that were not meant to be year-round residences, but now they are. 
and uh, so these homes just literally blew away in the storm. There's a lot of people living in trailers um, and the trailer park is just gone. It's flattened. I think there's maybe three or four left standing and those all have pretty major damage. So it's just been a lot. And the major business in the area, which is the marina, they also were just hit really hard. Their showroom is gone. The only thing left standing is the glass wall along the road, which kind of ironic. Um, every boat in their inventory got damaged. Sorry, I can't talk and do mascara at the same time. Um, so, I mean, good news, there's going to be a fire sale on boats probably in May, but, um, like they had this huge long, like barn on the water where they would do repairs for people's boats that got horribly damaged. I'm pretty sure it needs to be torn down and rebuilt. Um, the rental docks are gone. Um, there is a gas pump there and that has probably been a really major hazard right there. Um, I don't know what the status of that is at the moment. But anyway, like normally in a situation like this, Spend a Day would be the first ones to reach out and like sponsor things and try and help people recover. But obviously in this situation, they can't. Um, it's going to take weeks or months for everybody to get their insurance money. Uh, like nationwide, we're already dealing with increased prices on lumber and shortages of building supplies. And then when you add to that, that literally everyone in this area needs to repair something, replace something, or totally rebuild. It's just going to take so much longer to get all of that done. And with the tourist season coming up in May, that really puts them in a bad situation because they don't have places to live. Their businesses are gone. The businesses that are left are going to be struggling to reopen. And this is an area that got hit really bad in 2008 with the economic crash and the housing bubble and all of that. So they never really recovered from that. And now to have a tornado rip through and just destroy everything, it's really horrible. So I want to do this not just to help people get back in their homes and recover everything, but the area itself as a whole really needs a lot of help. And I want to contribute to that because this is an area that means a lot to me. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to go into more detail on that in the video that I'm going to be filming later. But for right now, that is where we're at. That's what I'm working on for right now. Uh, you are going to see that video before this one goes out. But um, yeah, this is what I'm working on. It has been friend of my mind lately because I still have family there. My mom, my aunt, my grandma, um, my aunt's husband, they were all living there and were impacted by this. And they're the lucky ones. Um, they got incredibly lucky because my grandma's house is brick. It's not one of those older cottages sitting on concrete blocks. So we got really lucky, but there's still a really long way to go. So um, I think I'm done with the get ready with me portion of this. So I am going to go film the intro to the other video. And then I have a script I'm going to write because I'm going to put more information about what happened into a voiceover. So here we go.
Okay, so it is now Sunday. I have not filmed for five days, and there is a reason for that. So we're going to have a little bit of a craft and chat while I catch you up on what has been going on. I'm currently working on adding the cuffs to my SCA chemise, which... It's almost done. I've not been able to go to an SCA event since I started making it really just because things have not lined up, but I do want to get this finished. And I was going to go to an event today, just like a crafty get together with the group. Um, however, I am now waiting on a phone call from my neuropsychiatrist which is related to this whole mess. So, um, where we left off. Last Thursday, um, the tornado hit the place where my mom is living, which, um, not great. And I forgot to add steam allowance here. We'll work with it. So that stretch of seven days, starting like Thursday to Thursday, or actually Thursday to Wednesday, it started with my mom getting hit by a tornado. It ended with Senor Gato back here, my 15 year old cat, getting diagnosed with stage one liver, dis or, I'm sorry, stage one kidney disease and a heart murmur. And in between, I designed and released a pattern from scratch. I had dental work done, Ash had dental work done, um, and basically we were just like hemorrhaging cash this week. And in the midst of all of that, I mentioned like one or two vlogs ago that I had a major medication change that was impacting my mental health. Well, the new medication is not working. The new medication made me horribly sick. So I had to go off of that and I messaged my doctor when that happened. He did not see that message. So for the last two weeks, I have been without any kind of chemical assistance up here for the first time in a long time um and I should preface this by saying that I did not get treatment for anxiety or depression as a teen or even like in my 20s because uh number one I couldn't afford it I didn't have insurance in my 20s and number two my family whose insurance I was on for quite a while um, they didn't believe in seeking treatment for anxiety and depression, um, because kids these days are over-medicated, according to them. So I did not get the help I needed until I was on my own, had my own insurance, could make my own medical decisions, and had enough money to back them up. So anyway, um, I should have been medicated a long time ago, but it's only been in the last five or six years that I was able to get treatment. And this is the first time since that started that I have had to do without. And if you have never gone through SSRI withdrawal, zero out of 10, do not recommend. Um, basically, SSRIs are the cages that keep the rabid brain weasels at bay and not having them has meant that the brain weasels are out and on the loose and are telling me all sorts of horrible things. So I've been dealing with that. My mood has been an absolute disaster for the last several days. And 
um, I know that I have not been fun to deal with, but it also means that I have not wanted to appear on camera. I'm doing a little bit better today. I don't know if that is temporary or if we are getting to the, um, the end of the withdrawal symptoms. I'm not sure. That's one of the things I'm going to talk to my doctor about once he calls me back. He is supposed to call me back today. Um, but yeah, it's not been a great time. And like the side effects on their own would have been pretty horrible. But when you combine them with dental work and senior cat diagnosis and a freaking tornado hitting the only family left that I am close to, um, it's been a lot. It's been a really hard week. So I have not wanted to vlog. I have not wanted to write or edit because as I have mentioned in previous vlogs, if I try to write or edit when the brain weasels are loose, then they tell me to do things like delete entire manuscripts and then empty the recycle bin. So we're not doing that. Um, I have been concentrating on crafting for the last two weeks because using your hands helps with serotonin production. That is actually scientific fact. And really all I've just wanted to do is curl up and isolate and stay away from the world. And I kind of hit my limit for handling anything. So I have been taking some time off, um, which I'm not terribly happy about. I understand the necessity of it, but also we are most of the way through March. And while I have made some good progress with Midnight Radio, that's done. Um, I've not been able to do as much work on the other writing stuff that I wanted to get done just because my mental health has been in such a poor state, largely because of medication nonsense. But currently I have the choice of Med One, which gave me such severe chronic fatigue that I was considering looking into going on disability because nobody could figure out what was causing it. And I thought, this is just my life now. Or I could take med number two, which paralyzed my, digest my digestive system and made me throw up at random. Or I can raw dog it, which is what I'm doing right now, and just dissolve into tears at random moments and start screaming at anything and anyone because I don't have any ability to emotionally regulate at the moment. So that has been the last two weeks. And there is improvement on the horizon, but it's just been, I don't wanna write, I don't want to edit, I don't want to read, um, I don't want to appear on camera and I think all of those things are fairly understandable given the circumstances. But it has just been a really difficult time. And I don't want to deal with any of it. <laughs> so um, that is where things stand right now. I don't really have a whole lot else to say at this point because I'm just trying to get through everything and I'm just going to work on my SCA sewing so that this outfit is ready to go the next time I go to an event. I'm kind of disappointed that I can't really go to the crafting social that we had today but like I said I'm waiting for a phone call and that's not something that I want to do in a public space and without knowing what time he's going to call I can't really plan around it. Anyway, um, that is where we're at. So not the most cheerful video, but this is life. This is what it is being an author. This is what it is having 
autism and ADHD and CPTSD and anxiety and depression. And this is what I have to live with on a regular basis in order to write and get my work done. So until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy. I hope you have something soft and fluffy to cuddle with and definitely make sure to give those fluffy things a cuddle for me because I, I really need to be holding my Hermes right now.